dan an elderly man was having his hearing checked and the, and the doctor determined he had a problem so he got him a new set of hearing aids really really expensive ones and after a few weeks he went back he had an appointment back at the doctor and he went back and and the doctor examined him and said boy they seem to be working just great your family must be really impressed you can hear everything they're saying and he said oh no i have not told them that i got new hearing aids <laughs> and i've changed my will four times <laughs> be careful what you say yes <laughs> How's everybody this morning? Great. Good. Thank you. Wonderful. All right. Doing well. Uh, we're going to start this morning by uh, an unusual, unusual technique. Hopefully everybody has a paper and a pencil handy. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a basic skills test to see how much we remember from last week. I, I I like to use tests as an educational vehicle, not as uh, how much do you know, right? So if you don't know something, oh, wow, I wonder how that would, you know, kind of thing. And I think it's really uh, productive. So what I want to do is I'm going to change my screen. And then I'd like you all, we're going to go through 21 questions. Whoa. And they're all multiple choice and just record the answers that you think are correct. And then um, we'll go back and review them all. Okay. So let's get started here. Okay. Did everybody see it says basic skills? Yeah. Um, yes. Is there anything in the upper right hand corner? No. 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 Okay. No. Okay. First question is What is your passcode? Or what? Go ahead and write write your passcode. Passcode for, for your device. It's not an ABCD question. I thought it was multiple choice. <laughs> they will be. They will be. First when two or not. When you say device, you're talking about your iPhone or your iPad, right? That's correct. Okay. I'm not telling you. You don't need to tell me, just write it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We learned that, right? Yeah. <laughs> Privacy. Where's a tough Bill, audience? Bill, <laughs> I have, I have, several, I have an iPhone and, I, and uh, several iPads. Which one do I take? Oh, just you have two, write them both down. Okay. <laughs> and don't lose the paper. <laughs> no. Second question is, what is your Apple ID and password? That should be the same on both your devices or all your Apple products. When I teach a class, I usually give, I have a piece of paper I hand out and, and it, it contains, it says, these are the most important things you need to know when you have one of these devices. The first press, the first item is what's your passcode. The yeah. second one is what's your Apple ID and password. And if you're gonna remember anything about your device, those two are the most important. You aren't going to get very far without that. The other one that's on the list is what is your Wi Fi network passcode? Oh, it's too long. And you only need that when somebody comes and visits, like one of your relatives, and they, the first thing after, well, the second thing, I guess, they say, Hi, grandma, or hi, grandpa, or hi, dad, or hi, mom. What's your, what's your <laughs> Wi Fi passcode so they can get on your Wi Fi network? And that's usually a 16 digit code of some kind. So it might be good to have that. Play it around. It's written on the it's written on the uh, 
on the router that you got from Frontier or Comcast. Right. But um, if, you're, if it's inaccessible, it's hard to get that, you know, crawl among the dust bunnies to find your passcode. So it's nice to have it written down somewhere so you can easily give it to them. That's not one of the questions, though. Oh, okay. Was... Number oh, three. I thought that was number three. I did too. Yes, that yes. was two. No, no, I didn't. I didn't say that was one of the questions. <laughs> okay. Next question there. See on your screen. Do you need a password to get onto your Wi-Fi network? A is yes, unless the network is locked, mm -hmm. uh, secured. B always. C no. Well, if you've been on it before, I guess number four. Know. Number four. Wait a minute. What is wait, it? Wait. A was what? B was what? On the screen. Yeah. What was the question? question? I have five answers. <laughs> the first one you asked was the passcode, and then the Apple passcode, and then and number two was the Apple pass. ID and password. Oh, both together. Okay. Well, what was the first one then? What's your passcode? <laughs> yes. That's you what I thought. Do this, Bill? <laughs> For your phone and your computer. Yes. They make this so complicated if you can only use one pass on everything. But they yeah, okay. All those doohickeys and whatever else. I understand. <laughs> All right. So number three was this one. Okay. Password for the Wi Wi-Fi network. Yes, no. What were the three choices? Yes, unless the, can't you see it on your screen? Oh, oh, I'm 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 looking at you, not the screen. Sorry about that. Can you look at me? Oh. Number four, what application do you open to update your applications? Is it Notes, the App Store, or Settings? Number five. <laughs> Number five, what application can you open to update your operating system? Notes, App Store, or Settings? <clears throat> Number six, in order to get a new application on your device, you need to open the Settings menu, open the App Store application, or open the Music application. You're picking our brain, that's good. <laughs> In order to organize the application icons on your home screens, you okay, like you have the home screens. <laughs> you a touch and hold any icon on your home screen. B touch and hold a blank area on your home screen. C put them on the dock first or D, A, or B? Mm -hmm. Number eight, to show the currently opened apps you, and again, that's to show the currently open, opened apps, you double tap the home button, move your finger up from the bottom of the screen and pause in the middle. Move your finger down from the top of the screen and stop in the middle. Flick your finger down from the top left edge of the screen. E is A or B and F is none of the above.
Number nine, turn your iPad off by press and hold the power button and the volume button at the same time, volume down button at the same time and release. Press the power button two times. Hold the power button until slide to power off shows on the screen or press the power button five times. The last one there, E is A or C. Matter. Number 10, how many different types of radio waves does your phone transmit? I have no idea. One, two, three, or four. Number 11, how many buttons does an iPhone have? Not counting the home button. One, two, three, or four. Number 12, all currently available app, Apple phones have at least how many cameras? I guess if you answered one on that, you're probably, <laughs> so I probably should have said <laughs> a little different, but go ahead. Yeah, that's kind of a. They all have one. <laughs> they all have at least one, so you know that. And that's what mine has. <laughs> that's one. Does that count? All currently available iPads have at least how many? Whoa. Did I, did I miss something here? No, that's right. I've got two the same. Look yeah. at that. One's iPhone and one's iPad. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Bill. How many how many uh, available? All currently, all currently available iPads have at least how many cameras? Lenses or cameras? Cameras. <laughs> Number 14, which gesture do you use to access the control center on newer iPhones. Sweep up from the bottom, sweep down from the top left corner, sweep down from the top right corner, sweep down from the left, oh, sweep, not down. That just says say sweep from left to right. This is just the iPhones, right? That's the iPhone. Number 15, which gesture do you use to access the notification center? Sweep up from the bottom, down from the left, down from the right, sweep from left to right. Are you going to go through and talk about these later? We're going to cover them all. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> Top left corner. Because this one, I thought I'd just tap on the little icon on the bottom. I don't see that. How do you access Spotlight Search? Sweep up from the bottom, down from the top left, down from the top center and stop in the middle, a sweep down from the right, top right corner. Let's see. Number 17. Shit. A gigabyte is a hundred, well, let's count the numbers there. 
A hundred bytes, a thousand bytes, a million bytes, or a billion bytes. Number 18, a letter or a number can be refer represented on one on a computer in one byte. Is that true or false? Number 19, the maximum number of applications you can put on your phone are 100, 400, limited by the amount of storage you have on your device, or there's no practical limit. <laughs> Number 20, do all the applications you have on your device show up on the home screens, plural? <laughs> True or false? That's and last but not least, do, does every iPhone require a passcode when it is on, when it is turned on? True or false? When it's already on. When, when you have it off and you turn it on, does it require a passcode? And the, que the question is, does every iPhone require this? You're not asking passcode to turn it on, but once it's on. <clears throat> no. Does every iPhone require a passcode when it is turned on? OK. That's a, kind of a dumb question. Ready? Ready? <laughs> what is your passcode? It's the, the codes that you use to unlock your device if you have it locked. The password used to access all things Apple. By the way, that Apple ID and password is used on everything Apple. That's the app store, the music store. The, and they are two different so things, <clears throat> correct? Say again, please. The passcode and the password are two different things, correct? The passcode is what the, the four, six, eight, it could, they could be the same, Leah, but they are generally different. You, Generally different. Yeah, okay, thank you. Hey. Now, is the passcode the um, numbers, like six numbers? Is that what the difference is? Well, <laughs> it could be the same six numbers that's your password, but it most likely is not. They are both set individually. Now, there's something where the phone comes on and you put in a screen comes up and you put in six numbers. Well, it could be six, four, or it could be alphanumeric. But yes, it's That's the thing the that you unlock, how you unlock your device. Um, <laughs> okay. okay, those three absolutely confuse me, and I think I'm still confused. What do you use to unlock your device? And what do you use when you go to the app store to buy something? That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the code you punch in, that's the passcode. When you can't get into your iPad or your iPhone without a code. So you just put yeah, it. If you, if you give me your pass, your device, let's say you're giving it to me for the refurb group, and you yeah. have not given me your passcode, uh, I have to throw it away. Mm -hmm. I cannot access your device at all. That's worth I can't get to any of the applications. There the is password, I, I don't need it to use the applications. I need it to buy a new application. 
-hmm. or to get some music and other things having to do with Apple. So there is a difference between passcode and password. That's just, yes. They're just not interchangeable words. They're very definitely different. Correct. Thank you. <sighs> Number three, do you need a password to get onto the Wi-Fi network? Yeah. Hopefully, yes, on your system. But yes, unless the network is not secure. Right. Wait a minute. The answer, is, the answer is A. Number four, what application do you open to update your applications? Settings. I had settings also on that. That's the App Store. Hmm. There's a technique to use if you go to the App Store to see what you purchased and update them. Right. What application can you open to update the operating system? You have to start to update the operating system by going to settings. Yes, I got that. We know what settings. Good old settings. When in doubt, go to settings. <laughs> In order to get a new application on your device, you need to go to the App Store. Go to the App Store. Excellent. Yeah. Number seven, in order to organize the application icons on your home screen, you need to either touch and hold on an icon on your home screen. And you that makes them hold it, And it makes them jiggle. You can do the same thing by touch and hold a blank area on your home screen. Right. Mm -hmm. A or B, I got that one. If you touch an application and hold it, you have to hold it a little longer because it goes through a, oh, do you want to do this with this app? And then it starts wiggling them. <clears throat> to show the currently open apps on on your device, and that's to see what apps are open. And actually, if you want to go to those apps, you can go there or you can shut them down or turn them off. You double tap the home button. If you have an, a system or um, device that has a home button, you double tap it quickly. Or you move your finger up from the bottom of the screen and stop in the middle if you do not have a home button. So the what answer about, to that question. E. What about looking at the dock? Is that not worth seeing? That doesn't show you what apps are on your home screen. Oh, home so screen. What apps are okay. open. That does not show you what apps are open. Oops, okay. On your Mac, it may. We're not talking about the Mac. We're talking about iPhones and iPads. Oops, okay. I keep forgetting. Thank you. <laughs> Turn your iPad off by press and hold the power and the volume button at the same time and release. And you'll get the screen that says slide to power off. You'll also get it if you have if you have a home button, you can press and hold the power button and that screen will come up. Okay. If you press and hold a power button and your device does not have a home button, the Siri will come up. Hmm. Number 10, how many different types of radio waves are there? I should have said, can you name them? There are four. Would you name There's them? One that allows you to connect to the cell phone towers. This is on your iPhone now. There's one that allows you to connect to Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. That's a local network around your house. 
There's one that allows you to get to your um, Bluetooth uh, car radio station. It's called Bluetooth. And there's one that allows you to hold your phone over the cashier pay station in a restaurant, McDonald's, Starbucks, or Publix to pay your bill. And that's NFC, Near Field Communication. So there's four. That was a tough question and tough answer. That was, that was a tough question, right? I didn't know if you're talking radios getting in with music or what. Okay, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Right. How many, buttons, how many buttons does an iPhone have? Mm. Not counting the home button if you had one. The answer is four, you have the volume up, volume down, you have the power button, and then you have the church button. <laughs> What's the church button? <laughs> church button is the one that's kind of indented and you have to go move with your fingernail. Oh yeah, what's that for? That's the one we keep. That's the one we keep forgetting to turn back on when we get through with church. Yeah, if you turn it off, forget it, huh? Exactly. And I was just checking mine to see if it was open. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I use focus. Okay. Well, how, 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 does currently, the, how does the sound work again when you want to turn it up or down? When you move that slider up or down. It turns off your device so it doesn't make any sound. Oh, oh, and you can't get any calls either. Okay, thank you. We know you can Correct. still get the calls. It just doesn't make any noise. Yeah, it vibrated. You know. Apparently, you can't get the calls either because my children keep telling me they can't get to me because of it. Uh, that's not true. They're getting to you, but they have to leave a message. Okay. I believe. I think too. You can feel the vibration if you have the phone near you. Yeah, it's there. No, you don't feel a bright vibration. Yeah. Yes, you do. I don't anyway. anyway. Yes, you do. Maybe it's there's a way to there's a way to change that. But hey, Bill, are you with us? I'm with you. Yeah. Could you dial nine four one? Give me a call nine four one. Not everybody yeah. now. Nine four one four four one. Five one five eight. Hold on. Oh, oh, oh. I just muted everybody. Uh, now, Bill, it's it's vibrating, and does it give? Don't does it ask to leave a message? Un unmute yourself, Bill. Okay. Yeah, I'm unmuted. It's still ringing. Yep, I just got the message. Okay, so they can leave a message, Leah. You don't need to leave a message, Bill. <laughs> I did. <Hey>. <laughs> Number 12, all currently available Apple phones have at least well, how many cameras? They all have at least two, front camera and back camera, at least. For example, my phone has, I think, four, three in the back and one in the front. And that's not counting something called the LiDAR cam. The newer phones have four or five, one in the front, four in the back. If all you see, what does it look like if all you have on the back, does it actually show four what look like cameras? So you're talking about iPad or iPhone? I, iPhone. There's a I camera on the back, and there's a camera on the front. At least. Camera on the front is when you open the camera, actual 
the app that, that can. When you open the camera app, there's a little, there's a little um, icon there somewhere that allows you to switch a little circular arrows, two arrows going around a ring. If you touch it, you can switch between the front and the back camera. Like on my phone, I can't even see the front camera, but it's there. All currently available iPads have at least one, two cameras as well. Some of the original iPads did not have a back camera. That's why I said currently available. Which gesture do you use to access, this is number 14, to access the control center on the newer phones? Sweep down from the top right-hand corner. And I think you can all do that. You just put your finger off the edge on the top and pull down, you'll get something called the control center. And we'll be talking about that in a later session and what it what it is and how you can use it. But that's how you access it. Number 15, which gesture do you use to access the notification center? You can't read that, but it's B, you swipe down from the top left. Okay, and that we'll talk about in a later time too, and that's called the notification center. And what it is, is all the applications you have are capable, most of them are capable of putting, sending out to you a little message saying you got new email or you have a phone call or there's new news or, and they all show up in the notification center. Number 16, how do you access Spotlight Search? You put your finger at the top left and you sweep down from the center, you just flick down. Don't start it clear at the top though. Put your finger like where the apps are in the top row of apps and just flick down and you'll get, it says series suggestions at the top. Will you tell us how what Spotlight Search is for those of us? It is equivalent to Google search of the internet. In other words, if it's there's a search bar that shows up and you type something in there and it will search your iPad for it. And we'll cover that a little later in the class. Okay, thank okay? you. Let me write that down as a note to make sure I do that. Bill, when I sweep down from the top, I don't get spotlight search at all. Don't go clear to the top, Ann. Start at, start in the row of apps that are there the top and just flick your finger flick don't pull down just flick i guess serious suggestions right that's what shows up serious suggestions that's spotlight search number 17 a gigabyte is one billion bytes I did that one just to show you, that's a lot. <laughs> and our machines have 16, 64, 128 billion bytes. And a byte is one letter or number. So that's number 18. So you can have a billion or 16, 128 billion characters 
<laughs> in there. And if those characters are all like Jim, we're going to have a problem, but they're not. <laughs> all right. Number, number 19, the maximum number of applications you can put on your device are. It's limited by the number of, um, by the amount of storage you have on your device. The more storage you have, the more applications you can add. For example, I have 128 gigabytes and I have over 300 apps so far. Number 20, do all the applications you have on your device show up on your home screen? They do not. They all show up in something called the app library. And I'll cover that a little later in the class as well. And last but not least, does every iPhone require a password when it is turned on? And if you answered that false, you are correct. But if you don't require one when you turn on your device, if I were <laughs> if I were a teacher in class, I'd wrap you on the knuckles. <laughs> You're so, you have to you have to have that passcode, not because it's required by Apple but it's required to preserve your information that's on your phone. And I guess that's the major difference between the passcode and the password. The per password gives you access to all the other Apple stuff. The passcode gives you access to your device. It's like a key to get into your device. Okay. Bill? Yes. If you have fingerprint recognition or face recognition, you don't require. What? No, it, well, Jim, yes, you don't require it all the time, but you do have to have the passcode. <clears throat> Once in a while, it's going to come up and say, I'm not going to accept your face or your okay. finger. I need you to enter the code. So, Bill, is what you're saying passcode now, is that what you previously call the unlock screen code? Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. And you have to use it every time you go into your phone or your iPad. Well, Even if Jim you've been off for two seconds. Jim said you don't have to if you set up your phone to have facial recognition, or if you have um, a home button, fingerprint recognition. You don't have to have it every time, but occasionally it's gonna come up and say, enter your passcode. But if you don't have either one of those other things, you do have to use it every time. I do, and I don't have facial, rec never would accept a facial recognition you may not be able to do a facial recognition because of the uh, model of your phone. Not okay. all phones have facial capability. Yeah. Do you have a home button on your phone, Leah? No. Okay, then, then you have the capability of setting up facial recognition. I tried and it would not take it. No, it works. <laughs> it does work. Yeah. Now, Bill, the, pa so the passcode is the fingerprint, right? I mean, that's the same as a passcode? No. I'm just thinking how to answer that. Um, all phones and iPads require a passcode. In addition to that, the newer iPhones and iPads, the ones without the home button, mm -hmm. you can set up those devices to recognize your face. How, how if about they have, if they have a home button, you can set them up to 
recognize your fingerprint. Okay, I but don't they, know. I, they, I all don't. Require the, they all require the passcode. Okay, when I use my fingerprint, am I using a passcode rather than a you're password? Using, you're using your fingerprint, <laughs> which is connected to your passcode. Okay, thank you. That that helps. All right. Total, still con perpetually confused about this. I'll put it that way. I don't okay. have one, but does your iPhone on your uh, Apple Watch require these kinds of things to get into them, or do they stay open all the time? No, Apple Watch requires a passcode. So every time you put what well, you turn it on, you have to have it. Every time I put it on my wrist. And once you've done that, you don't have to deal with it anymore. Until, until I you take it, it off. off. Right. Thank you. Okay. If my watch doesn't ask me for a passcode, does that mean I've signed in on something or other else with my passcode if they're all uh, synced together? They're not all synced together. Ooh, I lost something here. All right. Can you still see the screen? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we see your iPhone and your iPad. I lost a monitor. How did I do that? <laughs> okay, we're going to have to go on without it. Okay. Can I ask the question? Please do, Ann. I I'm still confused about my Apple ID. I have John's. I just don't have mine. It, in my your Apple ID. Yeah. To find your Apple ID. Look at the screen. Let me uh -huh. get the right mice here. On the iPhone. To find your Apple ID, to see, see, I can show you your Apple ID. I just can't get to your passcode. You go to settings on either of your devices. So I'll go to my settings on my iPhone here. I'll go to settings. And you see your name at the top of the settings menu and you click on that. And right here is my Apple ID. It says William Crow. My ID is wtcrow at verizon.net. That is your Apple ID. All right. Oh, thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> now it all makes sense. Good. And is that something that you put there or that Apple put there? Because I don't think I would have put what's there. It was, you gave it to Apple when you set up your device. Somebody did. Somebody did, because I wouldn't have put that, that's for sure. That email address? That's an email address that I've never used. Never used. Boy, you, okay. But yet I use it, the information that I have when I first got it, when I first got an iPhone, and that opens it up. They may be connected. I'm not sure. Thank you. All right. Apple. Uh, one of the things we talked about was the app library. Here are some of my apps. And if I sweep this way, there's some more of my apps. 
And if I sweep some more, there's the third screen of my apps. Now, not all of them are in here, even though some of them are in these folders that I've created, right? So there's the ones that are in the music folder of these guys. Right, but that still doesn't contain my 300 plus applications. If I go one more screen, it comes up with something called the app library. So if everybody does that, and you can do it on both your devices, I'll do it on the iPad as well. There's the app library on the iPad, there's the app library on the iPhone. And you're saying, well, these are in folders too. You know, there's little icons that have a gray background and I have some apps mentioned there. Each one of those contains one or more applications that Apple has created. For example, it created one called weather and put what it thought should be in the weather folder. And if I click the little the four that are in that icon there shows me all of them that are in there. And it thinks all of these are associated with weather. In fact, they are, but I'm just making that point. Okay. But I still can't find the application that I'd like to get to. So what Apple did in their infinite wisdom is that, well, why don't I give you a alphabetized listing of your app so you can find it? And you see where it says app library there on the top. If you tap on that, it lists all the apps in alphabetic order. Now, if your finger's small enough, you can go just to the S's. So I could come over here and tap the S and it takes me to the S's. Where, where did you get the app library at the top with the list? How did I get that up there? How did you get the list, right? Or yes, how did you get? Poke and hope. You poke where it says app library. Just tap it. Oh, okay, fine. I wasn't going far enough. Thank you. And then if you type it in, the one you're after, if I'm after weather, W-E-A-T-H. Whoops. <laughs> Let me get the right keyboard here. Okay, there's all the apps that start with or have the word weather in them or are weather. Okay. So you can actually type it up there and find the app, or you can put them in alphabetical order and go through and find, and it will, you can go through and find the uh, alphabetized list. So I go back to the home screen. The other thing that we talked about when we were taking the test was something called Spotlight Search. Apple introduced this so that they could, um, it was easy for you to find things on your device. And so you get a search menu and then you, you search a search line and then you type in what you're looking for and it gives you all kinds of information. So on my iPad, let's say I'm looking for anything that has the word B-I-L-L -L in it. So I'm going to sweep down from the top. Or I'm sorry. I put my finger near the top here, like here, and pull down, and it says series suggestions, right? Do the same thing with my iPad and it says series suggestions. And I'm going to type in on my iPad, B-I-L-L, -L, right? And now it gives me all kinds of information. It says I have a couple of things called uh, Billy Ellis, an American singer. So I have some songs by Billy. I could go to Safari with the word Bill, or I could have Bill Slattery, right? Or if I scroll down here, I have three different Bills in my contact list, including Bill Kelleher. 
Now the search, um, here, it, the search that you see here, is that the same as the little tiny search on the screen of your iPhone? It looks just the same, except it's tiny when on the main screen of your iPhone? No. I don't okay. know where the one you're talking about on the iPhone is. You're talking about the iPhone that's up on the screen? My screen? Uh, no, the, the home the home screen. But before the bottom things, it has a little tiny thing that says search and oh there it is, right? Right where you're see on the bottom? No. no. That's different. Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. That is. That is the oh. same. Oh, yes. okay. Thank you. That's that's something they added in the last operating system update. Okay, so yes, so, that's the same thing. So, Bill, mine on the very top says "Top Hit Bill Crow." How come? How about that? <laughs> mine even has your birthday in there. Oh, there you go. <laughs> it's on mine too. It says Bill Crow. <laughs> but there's all kinds of things that have Bill. There's some pictures that have me in them. Here's some emails from me to me, right? And then I could search various applications with the word bill. So it's a cool little feature that allows you to get to all kinds of things. You'll notice at the top of the list are the most recent apps you've used. And you'll notice it's a different list there on my iPad and my iPhone. And you're going to have a different list there. Okay, so everybody? The two devices do not always sync. Not for this stuff. So that was the app library and spotlight search. At the top of your device, now I'm going back to the home screen. At the top of the device on mine, let's say the let's start with the phone. It says 1054. On the left side, on the right side, that there's a little uh, bar chart, we'll call it, that has these little bars on it. It shows me the strength of the Wi-Fi of the cellular signal that I'm getting. So however many bars are white tells you the strength of your cellular connection. Is this something that you pay for from the people who supply your connection, like Verizon? They pay for you, they pay you the capability to attach to their towers. And how strong that signal is depends on how close those towers you are. So the I number of bars indicate, so if I'm out in the um, Sahara Desert, I'll get no bars because there's not a tower close enough. So four bars are as much as you can get? Yep, that's the strongest signal you can get. Okay, thank you. And, and then there's this you Go said ahead. that the white bars are the strength and then does that mean that the two black or the black bars you're not getting anything if the when you say black bars i'm not sure what i you have mean. four bars two and it's like a uh, megaphone it goes from small to large that's I this one. Two black that's and two white. That's, no, no, that's not the one I'm talking about. I'm talking about this one right now. That's exactly what I'm telling you about. Okay. On my iPhone. Okay. If hmm. some of those bars are not white, the signal is less. So if I don't have a strong signal, I'll only have three bars showing up. Okay. Or two Thank bars. you. I have to share, I'm in a single level building. And if I walk to different corners of my building, that will improve. The bars will get more or less? Yeah, yeah. like certain rooms in the house are better. I'm talking about the bars now, not the, not the fan. Oh. oh. There's the fan, there's the bars, right? 
the fan is the strength of the Wi-Fi signal and how close you are to the router. Okay. Okay. This is cellular. This is Wi Fi. And Over again, my... pardon me? And again, if it's white, it's good strength. If it's black, it means you have nothing. Well, you have less. If there's nothing there, you don't have any signal. Hmm. Now, on my iPad, I don't have bars. I only have the fan. That's because my iPad is not capable, technically capable of talking to a cellular network. I'm not paying for that. And my device doesn't have those antennas in it that we talked about in the test. It doesn't have the cellular antennas. Okay? If the fan is less than full, there's four strips there on the fan, that means the cellular network is, you can, you're, you're moving away from the router that you're using to connect to the internet. All of mine are black. Does that mean I can't connect to the internet? At least where I am. All of your fan, yes, are are black. Yes. Let me let me try something here. Do you have a router in your house? As far as I know, apparently not. Apparently not. Mine are black as well on this screen. So it could be black or white. Depends on what your background is where the fan is. You got it, that's just what I was saying. They were, I just changed my screen and now they're black up here. What Bill was saying. Now, if I go outside with my phone, I'm not next to my router. So what does that do to the fan? Disappears. Okay. It goes to nothing or disappears. You don't even have a signal. Okay. I find it interesting because when, at some point in my lifetime when people were looking at things like this, I was told that if it was white, it was not functioning. And if it's black, that is good and it's functioning. We're saying just the opposite. No, I'm not. Um, Bill corrected that a little bit for us. If you have bars, black or white, depends on your background. If the bar is hollow, it's there, but it's grayed out or whatever the signal is less. So for example, look at my screen right now, Leah. Yes. Uh, just a minute. See, it's black there. Yes. If I go to a different screen, it's now white. You don't see the other screen, do you? Wow. It didn't, didn't change. It didn't change. No, but we see it on your iPad. I know, but you should see it on both. <laughs> well, you just haven't put up another screen. And something's happening. No, I, it's not displaying another screen. So now you're, and what is that saying to you? that you have good service or not? I have good service. Thank you. Thank you for help, for straightening that out for me. Yep. 
I have to share something with you folks. I press the button on my steering wheel and ask it to dial a certain number and it always does it, but this time it did not. And it said, who are you trying to call? And I said, my friend Virginia, same. And it said, well, what do you want to know about her? And I said, how old is she? And it told me, it was like, oh, the world knows everything. Scary, huh? Yeah, it is. Okay, all right. Now it's white. Now it's white, right? Mm -hmm. And that's because the background, the background is a different color. On my iPhone and my iPad, I have a, um, I have a bar up here. Well, I have, I have, it says, looks like a battery and it has 100% in it. On my iPhone and on my iPad, it says 92%. And on my iPad, there's a lightning bolt through the battery. That says I'm charging it. So if I pull the charger off, the symbol changes to just a battery. And what I'm looking at now on the status bar is this guy right here. So do you have that on your device? Yes. Okay. And when it's completely black, it means it's charged full on mine. I don't know. Okay. I believe you. Well, let's see. Not sure whether I believe me or not anymore. <laughs> well, mine turns green, but it depends. I'm talking about the iPad? Leah? My iPad. Open. Yeah. Okay. the same thing that happens. Do I have anything on, on the icons sweeping around on the icons, etc.? How to move the icons around? I didn't ask you any questions on the keyboard, which we covered last time. Just let me review those for a minute. And I'm going to go to the notes app, start a new note. Let me do it on my phone. Notes app, start a new note. Keyboard shows up. And what you can do on the keyboard, right? What I can do on the keyboard is I can type. The first letter is always capitalized when you're starting a new line. But if you want to make it capitalized, you tap the little arrow here and the little arrow turns black. If you double tap the little arrow, it's called caps lock. And it shows I like that up. Tip. I like that, that I always wanted. That was great. It puts a little line under the line. So now everything's capitalized. To turn it off from that mode, you strike it one more time and it's back to normal. So that little button right there has three, if you will, toggle features, right? Not capitalized, capitalized, double tap, it's caps lock. 
The arrow on the other side is a backspace arrow. The one, two, three on the keyboard, if I just tap that, I get the numeric keypad. I can take it back to the ABC keypad. The happy face, if I tap the happy face, shows me all the icons I can use. And the icon shows up on the screen. You can use the backspace to get rid of it. All right. Bill, and why does yours say all iCloud and mine says folders at the top? You want mine to say folders at the top? I can do that. Well, I don't know why I can't get all iCloud. Okay. Hit the back arrow a couple of times to where it says folders at the top. Is that what you're saying it says at the top? Yes. And then it shows you the various folders. And I clicked on the one called uh, All iCloud. Oh, OK. Thank you. Okay. By the way, when we're in the Emoj, down here at the bottom, I just want you to look at that for a minute. Down here at the bottom is often a table of contents, per se, of what's showing up above it. And so if I wanted to quickly get to the sports emoticons, I'll just click on the soccer ball there. And here's all the ones for sports. If I wanted to get the one for animals, I'd tap the little teddy bear there. Now, you could put your finger here and sweep left and right right, to get those emoticons to show up, okay? But if I wanted to go directly to the flags and I had a special country, they have a flag for every country in the world. Is there a place where you can get emoticons that um, in addition to these? Not that I, well, we're not gonna get, <laughs> There's some other things you can do here. I just didn't want to, I don't want to get into those right now. <laughs> okay. Okay. Right. The other thing I showed you, well, let me get back to the ABC keyboard by tapping ABC. If you, well, I, I, uh, if I press and hold the space bar on either my iPhone or my iPad, the letters disappear and this whole area down here turns into a touchpad that I can move around the, the cursor. So you'll notice the cursor moving back and forth up on the main screen. Works that way on both the iPhone and the iPad. Why would you want to do that? Why would I want to do that? Yeah, to eliminate the keyboard. Oh, I want to do it to move the cursor around. Oh, so I, see. I want to go to a different place on the screen. Okay. Right, quickly. So I just press and hold it, and then I can move it up here and get rid of the emoticons, for example. Oh, okay. Thank you. That's the reason. Thank but it doesn't stay that way for very long. Stays, right. When you lift your finger, it disappears. So now I have my cursor clear up here, and I want to move it to the end, right? Now, you can tap the screen right here where the little circle is. If I tap the screen, it'll move to there. I'll move it back up. So that's one way to move the the cursor around. The other way is to press the space bar and slide the cursor over and down, right? So there's just two ways to do that, with the, whichever you find more convenient. If you lose the, the, the alphabet, how do you get it back? If I lose the alphabet? Well, I'm, I'm talking about the, the uh, what do you call it? When like, you lost the keyboard. Thank you, keyboard. 
How do you get it back? Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I, I'm in, in iCloud having played and I have a great big mouse and I, I can't get rid of them. I can't get a keyboard to go back to doing anything. Okay, hold on a minute. So explain to me again, you, you don't have the keyboard, correct? Well, I played, you... I played around and hit something and the keyboard came back. <laughs> well, that was the double yeah, click on the space, the double click no. on the space bar. So she wants to know how to get her keyboard back. No. No, because that comes back as soon as you remove your, your space your finger from the space bar, right? If you tap an area where you can type, the keyboard will show up. Okay. Now that's a uh, conditional thing because my keyboard is external, so it doesn't show up ever on the screen like it is right now. Okay. So if you don't have an external keyboard, in other words, you have just a normal iPad, and the keyboard is not showing up, you, you're, you're not in an area where the keyboard should be showing up. In other words, an area where you can type text. So Anne touched the screen and that was an area where she could type and that's why the keyboard showed up. Okay. Now the notes app has a bunch of little features in it and we're going to talk about them later, but if I wanted to add a picture to this screen or to this note, you see the camera there on my iPhone, I tap the camera, it comes up and says, take a photo or photo or video. I'm going to nah, take a photo of my desk there. Okay. And I want to use it. So now that photo is in the note. And we'll talk a lot more about this when we get to the notes app. Okay. Today, we're just focusing on the keyboard and putting information in. So far, so good? Yes. Uh, two boys, Tony and Danny, were ex exceedingly mischievous, and their mother had no idea what to do with them. They were just anything happened. If anything happened in town, it was a small town. If anything happened in town, they, all the residents of the town know who to blame. And they were continuing to do this. The mother not, didn't know what to do, so she got in contact with the local minister and ask him for some help. And he says, certainly I can help, ma'am. Have the older one come and visit, I'm sorry, the younger one come and visit me in the morning and the younger one come and visit me in the afternoon. So the next day, the, the younger son was venturing out to see the minister. And he walked down the street, up the stairs, rang the doorbell and this big hawking guy right? Huge guy. Meets him at the door. He says, good morning, sir. My mom said to come and see you. He says, yes, come in, my son. And he takes him back to his office and he sits behind this huge desk and has the boy sit in a chair in front of him. And he looks at the boy and the boy looks at him and he says, son, where is God? The little boy doesn't know what to say. Time passes and the minister says in a little louder voice, where is God? The little boy starts getting a little nervous. And finally, the minister in a big booming voice says, where is God? The little boy jumps up, runs out runs down the stairs, onto the sidewalk, runs clear home, onto the porch, up the stairs in his house, into his bedroom and goes into the closet and closes the door. And his older brother hearing him dash like this, 
runs into the bedroom, can't find him, opens the door and sees him shivering there in the closet floor. Says, what happened? What's going on? He, he looks up and he said, his younger son says, we've done it this time. <laughs> they don't, they, God is missing and they think we did it. <laughs> oh, that's cute. Okay. Let's switch gears now to settings. So everybody go back to your home screens. And then tap on the little cog wheel that's called the settings. And we spent a lot of time going there. So I put settings on my, on my, uh, on my dock here. Get it down here. There it is on my iPad. And on my iPhone, it's right there. Let's see, there's my iPad over here is my iPhone. Now, if you don't have it there, how do you get it there? I shouldn't put that in a, on a test. The way in which you get it there is you make the apps shake by putting your finger on that app. And I'm just going to click and hold that app. And I keep holding it until they start shaking. And then I move my finger to where the minus sign is there, and I drag it. Oh, come on. I drag it off. Now, let me do it this way. <laughs> You're not going to go, are you? And I drag it. There it is, right? So now it's no longer on the dock. If I do the same thing on my iPad, holding it, holding it, holding it, and then move it up. Now it's no longer on the dock. I recommend everybody put that particular app on your dock because we go to it so frequently. Therefore, it's always there. So I'll move it down on both devices, there it goes, okay. Now I'm going to open settings, both devices. And the settings menu came up on both my devices and I wanna, on the, on the iPad, it's at the, on the left side, in the left panel and it remains there. And I wanna to scroll to the top of it where your name is. And the first thing I'd like to do is make sure we're all putting, we're backing up our devices. We're backing up our devices in the iCloud. Okay. So this, that way, if you lose your device, it gets broken, you drop it in the swimming pool or whatever, and it no longer functions, you can get a new one and have the new one look like your old one because you saved all the information that was on it. That's the purpose of the iCloud. So what I'm going to do is tap my name here at the top and then tap iCloud, okay? So I tap my name and then I tap, when that, when that particular menu comes up, I tap iCloud. Now, the first thing you see in the iCloud is how much space you're using and how much space you have. I have 50 gigabytes and I'm using almost half of it. And that's on both my devices, okay? Now, if we look down there, it says iPhone is on, iCloud Drive is on, I, Apple Mail is on, password and keychain is on. I'd like you to make sure they're all on on your device. What is keychain? It's primarily, let's just talk about it as your passwords. Oh. 
Next to my iCloud mail, it says set up, but yet at the top, it does show I've used 7.6 gigabytes. Of what, I know. I know. Um, Not all of us are using our iCloud mail account. Oh. So you don't necessarily have to have that one on. Okay, thank you. So iCloud Mail is Apple Mail? Is that what that is? Or how does it? You know Wait. how you have a Gmail account? Yes. And a Yahoo account and a Comcast account? Mm -hmm. Apple oh. has an a email account as well. And a, an Apple service, an Apple Mail service as well. So this is and the iCloud mail they're talking about, the Apple mail. It's only the Apple mail. That's correct. Okay, thank you. That's versus. You know, I'm using, I use Gmail, but I use the Apple mail program to, to work with it. There is also, and this is a little confusing. There's the application you're using, and then there are the accounts that application accesses. So I'm using the mail application from Apple to access my Google Mail, my Verizon Mail, my Yahoo Mail. And is that confusing to many of you? Yes. Is that because you use that device that has the iCloud email on it? No, don't, don't say iCloud mail. I'm, iCloud mail would be the Apple mail account. Okay. So I, you could be sending me an email to wtcrow at iCloud.com. If you're sending it to wtcrow at verizon.net, the Apple mail program can see that right so all the emails you have other than iCloud you can put in that yes but and not yes. here not here this is just for the iCloud mail right right so if you don't have iCloud mail forget it I mean it's just that um that's how you notice it says use your existing iCloud mail account on your right. iPad or set up a free right. one Right. Okay. All right. So why would you want to save your Gmail in the iCloud or your other I'm mail? Not. I'm not. I'm just saving the iCloud mail in the iCloud. And I'm if you just, don't have Apple mail, then... You can have it off. Yeah. Turn it off. So you aren't saving your Gmail or your Yahoo or your no, Verizon. I'm not. I'm not saving my Gmail in the iCloud. That's correct. Okay. All right. You're you're probably saving it in Google. I'm probably no. I know I'm saving it in Google. Right. That's what that's I mean. Automatic. Actually, that's normally what you would be doing is saving it in Google, not in iCloud if it's a Google phone. <laughs> no, well, we'll get to email. And we'll talk more about that. Okay. I don't, I don't want to, we'll jump in a rabbit hole quickly on that one. At the top of the screen, you see this, these bars, it tells me how, what proportion of the amount of the, the iCloud storage I'm using uh, for what purpose? For example, I'm using that yellow area for photos. Okay. Now, if the difference between this number and this number is less than five, so for example, if this said 46 gigabytes of 50 used, I would be, I would only have four, this whole, this bar would be clear out to here. And I should, manage my account. In other words, my iCloud is getting full. I need to do something. And it's called manage your account here. I think you get 
is it five or 10 gigabytes from Apple? Five. How much? Does five. anybody have it? I have five. five. Yes. Thank you. If you're if you're full, that means you probably can't do an update because it needs all that spare space to do an update. So you need to manage your account by going to this arrow. Now, does tapping, an, and this is a general question for everybody, does tapping that arrow do anything other than give you a new menu? The answer to that question is no. It just gives you a new menu. And I just ask for it. And I can go back by hitting this arrow at the top. I'm sorry, I can't control your music here. <laughs> and if, see where it says change my plan? Now, if I click change my plan, it gives me the capability to go to 50 gigabytes. Well, that's what I have. To 200 gigabytes to two terabytes. All right. Now you could downgrade about payment. It says per month, and this is just purely for curiosity. If you do that and you have to pay the 99 cents per month, how does it get paid? Does it come through an Apple account on your phone or do you have to do something else? When you do that, it will say, you need to set up a credit card. Okay. And, okay. It, and that's when you'll, that's when you'll pull out your credit card, put in your numbers and then okay. set up the Thank credit you. card. And then every month it will show 99 cents on your credit card bill. Thank you very much. Yep. But it doesn't have to be Apple. That's, no, it's not an Apple credit card. Okay, thank you. Okay. Now I've gone back to this screen. See where it says show all? When I click this, it's going to give me all the applications that might be saving information. Notice how they're all on. I turned everything on, every application. Now it's not occupying the space. I'm not saving the application per se. I'm saving the information that that application may generate. Apple will keep track, for example, that I have Shazam on my device. And if I get a new device, it will automatically load Shazam from the Apple store. And that way it will go to the iCloud and get any data that I may have accumulated for Shazam. So if I have, for example, uh, let's see. If I'm using the weather app, we'll clear down here at the bottom. Here, the weather channel asks when you set up the app or when you start the application, what cities would you like to know the weather of or about? And I would put those in. That would be data associated with the Weather Channel app. So your iPhone knows you have the Weather Channel app because you use it, and it also has some data associated with it. Bill? And it's, yes. Mine, my, where yours says weather channel, mine says weather bug. How come? You have a different app. These are just well, yeah, my but I wouldn't have put that on. I would have put on the weather channel. So what is weather bug? It's another weather application. That I bought? Yeah, sometime, sometime in the past. 
and the Weather Channel is something you buy. Okay, you're They're using the three. Term, yeah, you're using the term buy generally. Right. Yeah. Apple yes. Apple uses the word purchase. And as Bill said, they could be free, but they still use the word purchase. So Sorry. it's when you have to purchase, it may cost you something, it may be free. And I think Bill has said the Weather Channel one is free. My wife uses the weather bug, it's also free. Okay. I don't have weather in my list, so now I need to go to Apple and ask for it. You have to go to the app store and ask for it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to hit the back arrow because I'm in this set of menus, right? So I'm just going to hit the back arrow and the back arrow one more time. Okay. And I hit the back arrow one more time. And now I should be back to the menu that says settings at the top. Everybody okay with that? Yes. Yes, except yours says search underneath it and mine doesn't. Right, right under where you've got family and then there's a gray line. My, I have the gray line. I have no, no search on the top. I don't have a search on the top either. I just haven't scrolled down far enough. No, you have search under settings. You have search right. in the gray box under settings. I don't have there that. There it is. There it is. Pull down. Name. Oh, okay, you have to pull down to get it. Okay, thank you. The question you have less uh, backup in your before you go any further uh, in the gigabytes i wonder I'm not sure because there... my backups are quite are more than yours okay so you may be playing some kind of game that generates backups you may have written document i'm not sure what you have in backups but that's not, okay i'm not much but i i'm wondering why <laughs> yours isn't i would think you would have more than i would <laughs> Okay. Depends on what you're doing. Not much. <laughs> Just I'm skip ask, over for you. Go ahead. I'm ask about the family you have underneath your name. Did I'm, you put I'm that in? Skip there? Over, I'm going to skip over family for right now. We'll cover that later. Okay. <laughs> I want to get the uh, beginners in on this, right? There's airplane mode. What's airplane mode? I'm going to put airplane. It's what you use to turn off your phone while you're in the air, unless you have particular kind of permission to use. More or less. Are you turning off your phone? Oh, no. you're just turning off a portion of it. What portion? I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> you're turning off My the phone. capability, the capability of your phone. I can't say it quite that way <laughs> anymore. You're turning off at least the cellular capability on your phone by doing that. And the idea here is not to interfere with the plane's communication system. You know, I like to take off and land with an airplane, especially the latter part. And you don't want to interfere with the plane's workings with your phone or your iPad. So that's why they do this. Now, I'm not sure how much interference there might be, but it's always a good idea to turn it on when you get on a plane. The next item down is Wi-Fi. If you're sitting at home right now and it does not have a Wi-Fi connection right here, you'll notice 
Mine says Frontier 1760. That's the name or the ID on my router. If you're not on one of those, you're talking to the internet through the cell phone towers. And you're paying, well, you're paying. The cell phone provider is tracking how much information, didn't say what, but just how much information is being transmitted back and forth. And that therefore you're using your cellular data transmission uh, banking account, if you will, your, your data bank that you have with the, you have an eight gigabyte plan or two gigabyte plan, and you're using that up. And if you exceed it in any given month, they may charge you extra. So it's always a good idea to have your phone on a Wi-Fi network, especially if you're at home. Any questions on that? By the way it looks on your screen and it looks on mine, that means it's not using any or it is? It says Frontier 760, it is using Wi-Fi. And you, would you ever change it? No, unless I get a new router or I go to your house, Leah, and then I want to get on your router and you'd have to give me your passcode. So if I take my if I take my cell phone with me to somebody else's house, do I have to change it? You don't have to. But I've you never may be paying it. for it, right? But if you don't, you want to be careful of how much you use your phone to do things like uh, viewing a video or going to a Zoom class. Okay. Thank my you. daughter and my daughter in law called me from uh, Korea on Zoom while she was traveling. So she was on a bus. She calls us up on Zoom, and we're traveling. And therefore, she's using the cellular network to make a Zoom phone call. Okay, to make a Zoom meeting. And that uses a lot of um, our family plan. Does that make sense? Our family data plan. When you look at your cell phone bill, it usually says something like your data plan is six gigabytes, two gigabytes, eight gigabytes, one gigabyte. And that's how much information you can transmit back and forth in any given month without getting extra charges. Never have looked at my bill. I'll do that next time. But yeah, doesn't, it, look at it. doesn't it always say you may be paying cellular for this? Where? My, mine tells me that there may be cellular charges. For Wi-Fi? If you're if you have it set up this way, when I'm in an email and I'm going towards something to, that I'm looking at something that I want I want to pursue, and it will say you may be charged, you may be paying cellular. If you're not on a Wi-Fi network, yes, mm -hmm. it's a message. Yeah. Messages may charge you that. Yes, I believe that was that's really what it is only in messages. No, it would be more than that, but messages warns you. You're sending the message to someone who is not an Apple user. Yeah. It's usually when you get that message. Okay, next thing there is Bluetooth. That's the other set of antennas. And this allows you to talk to your hearing aids, external speakers, uh, the dashboard on your car. Remember that's the short range communication. And the next item there is cellular. And you'll notice there's no cellular 
on my iPad. So if I switch over here to the iPad, I don't have cellular on the iPad. Well, I have cellular. And I turn that off all the time, except when I do want to use it. Is that? What do you turn off? My cellular data. She's gone to here and she's turned off cellular data. That's, of course, on my iPad. I understand. Yeah. If you turn off cellular, well, if you're on your iPad, I can't communicate. If I'm on the road with my right. iPad, I can't get onto the internet. Right. But if I turn, then I just turn it on. When I go, like when I take it with me, I just turn it on. Well, you're on your iPad or the iPhone? On my iPad. So you have cellular on your iPad? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I take it with me. And that means you, pay, you paid extra for the iPad. Right. And you're paying the cell phone provider. Right. <laughs> an extra fee monthly. Those are two things that's occurring with you on your right. iPad. And, and I did that say, I travel, you know. I understand. And if you say turn off cellular data, you're not able to use, let's say, send an email or receive an email. You're not able to do that if you have cellular data turned off. Right. But I just, the reason I turn it off is I want to remember. <clears throat> I understand. Uh, yeah. So anyway, then wants, I do this. She wants, she wants to remember she has it. She wants to remember she has it on so she, she doesn't exceed her plan. That's it. That's it. Because if I'm someplace and I forget that I have that on and I really don't need to use my iPad, I could use my phone. Then exactly. I can, Right. That's why I turn it right off. But when I go to my sister's and we're going to watch videos. Oh, yes. Well, if you're using cellular data on either device, yeah, it's yeah. going to go against the total you have available for yeah, both right. devices. Just got okay. let, it, let notice from her she's coming later on today because someone's in the hospital. I'm at the hospital right now. Here's your bed. So this is this is oh. the mattress pad. I mean, oh my gosh, you got but you just know. know. Books. I'm getting confused. Some people yeah, don't have their know. mic turned on or off. Do I need it? Well, I suppose. Yeah, you want a mattress pad. Okay, and here off. is the sheets and a. Oh my gosh. And okay. here is a nice. This is a twin quilt. I just I wish washed it. Smell. It all smells good. Ladies, ladies, please oh, please mute yourselves. Thank you. I am yes, I all right. Notifications. We're going to skip that for right now. We'll get to that when we talk about notifications. Sounds and haptics. This is a good one for learning how to access stuff in settings. If you tap the little arrow there, that's another menu. And I'm going to skip by the first couple of things. Headphone safety and personalized special audio, spiral audio. Okay, ring. What's your volume level for rings for phone? Can you hear that? Did you hear that? I need somebody to say yes. No. <laughs> okay. Didn't hear that, right? That's okay. This change, this is like changing the volume on your side buttons, right? On the buttons on the side of your phone. If you look at the change with buttons is turned on, that means I can reduce the volume of ringing with the side buttons. If I have this turned off and I have this turned clear up, Right. If I have that turned clear up, I can't silence or, or turn down the volume by using the volume buttons on the side of the phone. Now, down here is a list of all the ringtones. Well, let's go all the sounds your phone can make for particular 
um, applications. Ringtone, that's when the phone rings or you get a FaceTime call. And I get the Harry Potter theme. If you click that arrow, come on. Okay. Hey, Bill, how'd you get to the screen? Which one? The one you're having right now. <clears throat> We were up at cellular data. <clears throat> I'm scrolling clear down <clears throat> where it says sounds and haptics. Sounds and haptics on the iPad or iPhone, sounds on the iPad. And I guess I should say, what's a, what's a, um, what's haptics? Movement. That's a vibration on your phone. So that's the vibrations you're getting. Go back right. to the ringtones again, please. I'm on ringtones here. It says Harry Potter's mine. And can I get there? Yeah. Here are the various ringtones you can have. I, I hit the arrow and I can pick from a large number of tones. What, what do you do if you want to have a specific ringtone for a particular person? Okay, I was going to go into that. But thank you, you. You go to contacts, go to that person and tap edit. Now, I assume you have the, that person and their phone number in the con in contacts. Yes. Contacts. You go to that person. You tap edit in contacts for that person, and it'll have ringtone there. And then you go ahead and select the ringtone. Little story about that. My wife selected this ringtone for me, and I, I'm sorry you can't hear it. It's a barking dog. So for revenge, I selected this tone for when she calls me, and it's the sound of a duck. Okay. No, I don't want good either, information. Good information. Huh? Yeah. I always I wondered see. how people did the different ringtones. That's great. Right. I would. Uh, Okay. Before you go off of that. Uh huh. Go ahead. Did I lose you? I've noticed that on my phone, I have the on a um, one of the alert terms checked. What do you have checked? Leah, what do you have checked? Did I lose Leah? Yes, uh, I have popcorn on the alert, but on the ringtone, I don't have anything marked, but I still get the same sound. You have to have something checked. What's it say on a ringtone right here? Anything? There's a default, so won't she get the default of reflection? It doesn't even yeah. offer arrows. Uh, it doesn't offer it. Not sure where you are, dear. But Bill, so can, why shouldn't she just so you can, go to a wouldn't it go to a default? Hit the thing. It should go to default. That's right, but it should say default. But I I don't have anything marked, and I'm not sure why. But I am getting the same tone ringtone that I get on the alert tone that I have marked. One of my phone rings. Okay. 
I'm not sure why. So no, you know, I don't know. Just a minute. When it says ringtone here, you have nothing? That is correct. Doesn't say anything. And there is an arrow there. There is no arrow. I'm not sure you're at the same screen I'm on then. Does it say sounds and haptics at the top? It says ring. Sounds and epic heptats. It does say what my ringtone is and my text tone is. But when I go, go to. When you go where? It is different when I use the change buttons. I'm okay. Thank you. I, you I answered my question. So you can go down here and select different um, sounds for the different features. Like you get a reminder, I get chord, Aurora for calendar alert, swish when I send an email. If you're going to change um, the ringtone for individuals, I really recommend you don't do it for more than two or three. I did it for about six or eight, and then I couldn't keep track of who was who. So, <laughs> so I do it for my wife, and that was about it, right? Keyboard feedback in there, you want sounds and haptics turned on. So when you touch a key on your phone, you'll actually feel it, and it'll make a sound. OK? Well, Bill, do you do you have going on? Do you have play haptics in ring mode and silent mode and further at the bottom? And I have both of them on. Does that mean it can go on when I'm in church? The haptics play haptics in ringtone and play haptics in silent mode. So I have that. That's it'll it'll vibrate, and that's why Leah may not have been getting sound. It, uh, it doesn't oh, vibrate. Oh. It's on, and, both should, on. and it should vibrate when you get a phone call, and even though you're on silent mode. I really don't remember when it does. I'll pay attention next time. Okay. And let's go to general for the last subject, and we'll, we'll wrap it up there. I go to general, and we tap about. Now, we did this the last time. We went to general. So we're in settings, we go to general, and we go to about. And I think I had you all put in your name up here. Okay, so it should say name iPhone. The version of your device should be 16.5.1. On my iPad, you'll notice it's not. It's just 16.5, so I have to update my iPad. It tells you which iPhone or iPad you have. Bill, on the update, my version says 16.5. And then in parentheses, it says then in parentheses, in parentheses, it says 20F66. That's interesting. You're on the same screen I have where it says about at the top, right? Yes, and it's iOS version, and then it says iOS 16.5, and then 20F66 point of parentheses. Did you hit beta? Did you go to beta? I don't know. Why am I getting zero beta? F, two zero F six six, right? This update includes and right? 
Uh, yes, in, in parentheses. Why am I yeah, getting no. your feedback here? Somehow it sounds well, like I'm saying says, things twice. This is Diane. I'm not sure. Says the same thing. That's an update. When you tap on that 16, when you tap on that 16.5, you get what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. There. Yeah. Yeah. So what I do, what I recommend everybody is if I hit the back arrow and then I go to software update, see the one, the red one on software update. If I tap that, right, and yes. I plug my device yes. in and let it run overnight, it should update because it says automatic updates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it may not tomorrow night. It may take a week for it to happen, but it will happen. Now, don't do it now, but you could click Install Updates Now. Okay, you I found that my, that. I have found that my phone and my iPad will tell me when it's time to update or when they're about to do the update. Do they all do that? It's telling it told me that by putting the red number up there. So it does both. Okay. Okay, everyone. So I'm gonna I'm gonna hold it right there. Um, I once dated a gal who broke up with me because I have nine toes. Yes, she's lactose intolerant. Hopefully, I can't see you oh, guys. So really funny. Funny. That, that was funny. That was cute. I'm not, I can't see you guys, so I don't know if you're shaking your heads or, or what you're doing. Right? Very good. <laughs> All right, let me do something here. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Did you know that ants never get sick? It's because they have antibodies. I've started telling everyone about the benefits of eating dried grapes. It's all about raising awareness. It's not as good. <laughs> it's good. I, I accidentally rubbed ketchup in my eye. Now I have Heinz sight. Do that one again. <laughs> I automatically, I accidentally rubbed ketchup in my eye, and now I have Heinz sight. Oh. <laughs> right. And now you have to think about this one. Did you know muffins spelled backwards is what do you do when you take them out of the oven? Now you've got to write down the word muffins and then spell it backwards. I'm not going to tell you that one. <laughs> I tried to come up with a... Uh, carpentry prom that would would work would work I thought I had it nailed but nobody saw it did you get the three there I think Diane did <laughs> right uh Oh, singing in the shower is fine until you get soap in your mouth. Then it's a soap opera. Oh. That's enough. <laughs> muffin, 
Right. When you take everything. the muffins out of the oven, you sniff them. Sniff them. That's right. <laughs> sniff them. Okay, everybody. Have a good Thank week. See you for See a you next great time. Thank you. Gonna, yes. Thank you. We're going to continue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice week. What's yeah, next? We're week? Talk. Next, next week is more about settings. Okay. Take care, everyone. Have a great Thank week. Thank you. Have a great yes. week. Thanks. Take care.